Well, welcome back. Hope you've all had a happy Christmas. Um, and uh, if you're seeing this in the new year, let's hope it's better than last year because it was shite. This episode's got the startings of me looking at rebuilding the bulkhead. Uh, before any of you throw your hands up in horror and say, oh my God, it's not worth it. It's probably not. But the nearest thing I can find to an alternative is buying a used one. Um, that's still going to want about 300 quid's worth of parts welding in. And that's just what I can see on the pictures on the units on eBay. Looking at a rebuilt one, uh, you're not going to get much change out of 1,400 quid plus a bit of transport. So I figured, well, what's the worst that can happen? I waste a few gas cylinders, a few uh, TIG sticks and learn an important lesson <laughs> or actually achieve something which is um, saving me a shed load of money. So I'm going to try and rebuild it. And I am, it's going to be me that's trying. Uh, I'm not going to call in Gary, not least because I want the guy to have a break. He's done a great job on the chassis. And if you're watching Gary, cheers for that. So yeah, um, I've started making up patches, um, which involved getting back into some sheet metal bending and folding and, um, well, basically spitting hot metal at it. Uh, my TIG welding leaves a lot to be desired. Uh, I've got an awful lot of practice to do and learn some skill with it. See what you think and uh, leave some comments below. I will, if I remember, add as many links to other Series 3 uh, repairs that I can find, the ones that I've been watching, and I'll also put in some of the links to some of the very experienced panel bashers, tin bashers that I found on YouTube. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's an art in itself. I always admired custom uh, hot rods come out of the States and the odd ones that you see over in the UK. Um, I, yeah, the mind boggles. It's a completely new skill set and it's well out of my uh, range of experience. <coughs> Needless to say, we've been using a cobbler's hammer. <laughs> Enjoy. I thought I'd have a bash with the grinder and uh, clean up some of the paintwork, or strictly speaking, get my daughter to do it. Um, the idea to see what kind of material we've got left to work with. Um, so the priority has been cleaning off the front and the inner faces of this upper portion. Um, still got a load more to take off, but um, ignoring the foot wells because we know they're gone. Ignoring the side pillars because we know they're gone. Have we got enough datum points to work from? Um, so we've measured from that pillar foot to the other one and got a full inch dimension. I can't remember what it is at the moment. We've then measured from across the um, hinge positions and got, the, got a similar thing. So from the top hinge and the bottom hinge, the widths are in full dimensions rather than some oddball 7 sixteenths or whatever. So then it's a case of working out what we can actually get to replace. Um, I need to have a good look on the pictures of these replacement panels for the outside skin, which I think come with the flap hinges, which is good because we're missing one on there. Um, but I can't find anything that covers the inside face and that's uh, pretty grotty. But I think once I've got an outside, I can work something for the for the inside. Um, this is my main concern. I'm reasonably comfortable repairing everything from the sort of gutter strip down up to and including the front face of this. Where I start getting a bit sketchy 
is this section and the inside. So yeah, it's just a case of now finish cleaning off this lot. Not now because I've had enough. And uh, take a view on it. But it is looking increasingly as if I'm going to make a repair job rather than uh, sell my left kidney and get a replacement. Yeah. Looking at it, it looks as if it has had a, uh, a new set of uh, footwells or replaced set of footwells. There's a few things like this turned out edge here. The fact that it all, it's there seems to be multiple layers which would suggest it's been put in and cut in yeah and it looks to be on both sides yeah and uh, first time I've actually realised that the driver's footwell is six inches wider than the uh, passenger footwell that's on a, a right hand drive car so I'm, I'm wondering because the bulkhead's up, that bit's obviously fixed. So that would mean that anything that's a left-hand drive, the driver's got less foot room. That <laughs> serves them right for driving on the wrong side of the road, I guess. Yeah. Scratching my head. Uh, I've got to have a look at the bottom of that, that edge there. But again, it's... All right, it's, it's gone from here, but it's a fairly safe assumption to assume it went straight across. Straight across. which is what we'll do to replace it. Now there was something on there with a pair of lock captive nuts which was spinning and I can't remember what it was. I'll have to go back through my videos. God, again. Yeah, it was the biggest problem was trying to determine what kind of uh, reinforcing structures underneath. And this, this plate and the one on the other side were for the bonnet hinge, which is gone. And other than that, there's not really a great deal in there. A couple of bracing points and those two tubes for the wiring loom to go through they seem to be the main reinforcing obviously there isn't one there and there's only half of one there that'll be interesting uh, probably squash a baked bean can to go in right lunch is calling so this is the young lady my daughter Amelie that was uh, grinding away at the bulkhead <laughs> just show us your fingernails <laughs> she's just been out and had her nails done marvellous Right, I uh, think we're off out shopping for a couple of hours, so uh, bring you back in a bit. Well, morning all folks. This is uh, Christmas Day. And my Christmases are not very Christmassy. I'm not a great fan of religion. I don't like commercialism. Uh, anyway, we're out for a walk with the dog. Said dog. It's been a nice frosty night. Not a bad place, is it? We're about a mile and a half from where I live. <sighs> the kids are at the mum's. Partners with her kids. So it's just me and the dog. So I'll probably get back from this walk, warm up a bit. And then I'm going to go and mark out the uh, bulkhead for which bit I'm doing first. Uh, and if I feel up to it, get the grinder on it. I'm full of a head cold. And whilst the cold frosty air is helping, it's very snotty. Anyway, I'll bring you back later. That's probably a slightly better example of a dry stone wall being built. So you see the capping stones are laid on one side in a line and they go back on top. And you can see the two outer skins and a rubble fill. And every few stones I put a tie-in piece which cuts across. So, for example, get me mitt in there, that one, it's a tie. And you can see the taper on it though. Yeah. So this, this is the other end of the uh, drover's road. Albeit, not the usual end people come out at. Nice morning though. I think we've seen one person this morning. Uh, 
the range in front is Kinder Scout. The peak's just around to the left of the tree. It's coming into view now. It's not very high, but it's the highest one in the peak district. And we've, we're about halfway up it at this height. Radio mast is the uh, top of this hill, which is a ladder hill. So that's your Kinder Scout range over there. Yeah. All right. A little bit of agricultural fabrication how about that lot. Eh? It's just to stop the gate from going through. It's got your heads in the way. Yeah. All right. I think I've showed this view before. It's one of my favourites. I live just around the corner here. So the escarpment there is uh, Castle Nays, and there's an Iron Age, or Bronze Age, I think it's Iron Age fort on top, all the remnants of one. The little village in the mid-ground is Coombs, and this is Coombs Valley. You can just about work out the reservoir down the corner here. Nice part of the world. Well, it's Christmas afternoon and it's uh, brass monkeys out here. It's damp and cold. Anyway, I'm just weighing up, um, trying to get myself a sort of sequence of events or patches. Um, so I've decided to do the inside face of the uh, bulkhead first. Reason being, there's less complicated bits to work around and none of them are available to buy which means I get to uh, chop up some bits of steel and weld them in. I'll put a link below to a, a YouTube channel, um, which was recommended on one of the comments earlier, and the guy does some quite nifty ways of repairing stuff. All right, what I'm looking at doing, we know the footwells are going to be changed, and the new ones come with that piece, that piece, obviously the bottom and the side. So that position will be given from the new footwell up to the bottom of here. And then it, it spot welds on along here. Uh, or wood if there was anything to spot weld it to. So my first challenge is cut a patch out that I can put a fold down and basically just replace that all the way across. So it'll be butt welded along here. Lap welded into that. Um, it seems to show a diagonal joint there. I'm not entirely sure how that's going to look on the uh, footwells. So I just might take it straight across on the basis of it's easy enough to chop it out rather than add it on. So that'll be first patch. I'll bring you back to this one and this one. And then the second patch is over here. So again, I'm going to chop that out and uh, replace this flange here. As Richard would say, for half and half. Um, reason being the flange is knackered and half and half the I think that's a check strap for the door it's knackered so when I cut this out I'll take it off and then reproduce something s s of a similar nature that should then give me that position that curve reproduced that is a nice solid line because it's actually been bent away because it's a knackered and then we move on to these now these things are, from memory, where the wiring loom goes through. So I don't believe they're super, super critical, but they are knackered. So um, I'll probably take out the top face and, and re remake the loop and leave it long and then spot weld it around here. So once that top's on with the, with the orifice, make a, a flat tube that will come through, spot weld it around, grind it back. And leave it long on the other side to finish off. Uh, that one will then be my pattern for this one because there's not much left of it to make a pattern from. But with the same approach, chop it out um, with the orif weld in the new piece with the orifice, 
put a flat tube through well done him that then for all intents and purposes covers me on that section right the way across there's a minor repair to do here where I got a bit enthusiastic I stroke pissed off with the bolt that wouldn't come undone and it tore out then we're moving on to this section and I ain't really got a lot of thoughts on, on this yet other than it is all double skinned and the outside skin will be new and it'll come the outside skin will come across to this point here I believe but I'm not sure how far up this face it comes so the starting point has to be re to reproduce this internal skin that's now missing. So I'm going to start by doing on the, uh, this is the passenger side, which is the most complete. So I've got to replace all of this edge. And then that incline that runs down to it. Once that incline's on, I can then look at doing this flat section here which is a bit snotty with the upstand and depending on me, how my folding works out I'll probably do this as a separate piece so it'll be uh, for all intents and purposes a flat here another one there another one there and another one there so one two three four five pieces stitched in a bit of jiggery pokery around this portion which I think is just clearance for the uh, wiper assembly doodars uh, which are missing so this will have to come off to get put back on so that's that's roughly what i'm thinking so once i've got that something like on the inside so it's for intents and purposes reproduced i can then copy that and do it over there um when i'm done the way i see it is basically that'll be all new that'll be new that'll be new just this top edge which has got all this fancy bloody press work with the uh, studs and whatever in it that'll be that'll be retained and probably a good portion of this bit but everything else should be replaced and there's the original seam line and there's another one on the underside but uh i can't I, I, so i therefore believe that this top piece all the way across was that that was added to during the manufacturing Oh, cold. So that's that should then get me to a stage where this side, this the internal face on here is rebuilt. And then I'm ready then to flip it over and look at the other side. Once I get to that stage, I shall have bought the inner skin for the flaps for half an hour. The foot wells, both of them, and the both A-frames, or A-pillars, I think they call them. Uh, and then after that, there's a little bit of jiggering about sorting out this kind of thing. I'll have to make myself up something as a dolly to knock against. And uh, yeah, so a couple of hours and should have that done. <laughs> I'm not sure you'll pick this up, but there's the odd snowflake dropping. Hey, it's a white Christmas. It's bloody cold. You see them? There we go, like that. Like that. Veritable blizzard. That feels better. God, it's perishing. Don't think there'll be much progress today. Merry Christmas, everyone. <coughs> so that's the first uh, patch cut. And I've got to make the flange for half an hour now. Um, and then once the flange is tacked onto this with the, with that vertical profile Cut out the crap and I need to recover this and then try and work out where the hole centers are well, That's gonna be a bit uh, a bit tricky. I haven't worked that one out yet Done both sides. I've got the same problem with there. So now the gonna make the flange up And then work out where those hole centers are, but you can see how it's it's all cracked up and gone, it disappeared inside. I'm hoping when I uh, probably drill out these, that looks like a ri it's riveted in. And I thought these were supposed to be welded. So something else I've got to check up on. Um, but if I can separate off this small inside the edge of the patch, 
I should be able to use that curve to determine the whole centres. I don't think it's absolutely critical on the basis of it. It's like a, um, it's not a strap, it's a, it's a hinged arrangement, I think. They weren't on here, so it's difficult, difficult to guess. I was busy put that out one for the community. <clears throat> what does the uh, retaining straps look like on a Series 3? Anyway, uh, yeah. Struggling because my uh, head's full of snot and I'm dribbling every time I put my goggles on. Lovely. So that's the idea. Um, then tack it on around there. And once it's tacked on and, and secure, nip it back to the shop. Seam it round inside and outside, dress it. And then that can be welded on. Uh, I need a load more of these, I think. Because these are a pain in the arse. Um, the reason for leaving this long is so I've got something to grip it with. I left it a bit long though. Yeah, so what I'd like to do is be able to tack them both up, but I'm going off clamped. Well, that's my first ever bit of TIG welding. <laughs> I think that's stretching it is the uh, definition. So that's tacked round on one face. I've got to flip it over and tack the other face and then start joining up the dots. Um, you can see hundreds of errors in it. But, you know, you've got to start somewhere. Uh, I'm only running it. 39 amps and it is 40 thou thick or one mil and it burns through pretty easy so i figured uh, i'll keep the amps down and just slow down the movement <laughs> like i know what i'm doing well it ain't pretty but it's slowly improving um I, I, yeah i need to do a bit more work practice i think because that's shite um I don't know what it is that I'm doing wrong, and that's half the problem. So I'm just going to carry on and botch it together for now, and then watch some more videos tonight. It's bloody horrible, but penetration's good. Uh, so this side gets cut off, and that's the side that we'll see. So I'm going to go over it again and try and fill in some of the gaps it ain't pretty I mean it ain't seen but uh, be nice to get it a bit better than that yeah just keep going plugging at it and then uh, do the other one I mean it's not distorted any I mean lump of aluminium as a heat sink seems to have improved things yeah there we go Well, I've been beavering away. Uh, <clears throat> um, watched a load of videos last night and I'll put some links below. Um, I'm on the second uh, patch now. And the main differences I've done is I, I dropped the amps down to 20 and then I've ended up back at uh, about 32. Um, I've picked out quite a few tungstens, sharpened them up so that I can just keep going at it when I cock it up. This is the reverse side. Um, I've been tacked it up and welded it along and burnt a bloody great hole in that I've then had to patch up. I flipped it over, trimmed off the edge, and then basically run the torch down with no filler rod and got quite a, an acceptable joint. Obviously, you can't see all that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it ain't easy and... It ain't clean, <laughs> but it's got the startings of showing some, well, no, it's not at all, has it? <laughs> if you compare that with the other one, that's the first one. And I think that where I've cocked up on this one is I hadn't got it clear. I didn't uh, degrease it. Uh, back face is not too bad, but yeah, fill it welding. So you can see the hole are burnt. Now I've got to clean it round and then try and go over it on this face. So yeah, it's... Uh, I'd like to say I'm enjoying it. It's frustrating. I, um, and it ain't being very quick. I dare say if I'd have bought a MIG welder, I'd have had it done by now, but there we go. Uh, and I'm using up gas like it's going out of fashion. 
All right, I've got to clean the bit where I burnt it and then put a hole through. Yeah, I've got a, a reasonable sort of rhythm going on here. And then completely lost it here. <laughs> a bit of a clean up and then I think we'll call those two bits done. That almost looks like it was made to fit. So a bit of chopping out and a bit of welding on, but I'm not doing the welding on until I'm, uh, I've got quite a few bits to do. Yeah. So probably do that one next. Shouldn't be any welding on that, should be just just folding. Um, yeah. That's for the transition between the bulkhead and the bolt and the footwell on the driver's side. It's 24 inches long, inch and a half flange, but half and half. And then the upstand that will get cut into the bulkhead as a square comes out here for the steering column. I'll flip it over and flatten that out, and uh, that went quicker than I thought. Do you like my cobbler's hammer? <laughs> I haven't got a panel beating hammer, but that's got a nice large face on it. <clears throat> that's pretty bloody good, that is. I haven't filmed uh, making those. Uh, I don't think you'd have learned anything. <laughs> um, these are the two holes. One is for the, well, they're both for uh, wiring looms going through the dash. And they have a flange on one end and it's uh, butt welded at the other. I've made them longer than they actually need to be so that I can knock them through. There's a patch that's got to go on the outside, fit the patch, seam it round, and then grind this flush. And then the same on to the side. Um, I don't want any overlaps if I can help it. So I'll, tomorrow I've got to tack the two seams together and then basically just clean them up. If you look at them, they're, they're not they're not exactly symmetrical, but they're not bloody far off. Blind man to be pleased to see those. Um, so I've just bent them around a couple of pieces of bar and then kept fiddling until they're about the right shape. I drew the inside and the outside the sizes on there around <laughs> the bits that were rusted versus the bits that weren't there and guessed the rest. So it's near enough there. I don't think it's critical anyway, but uh, given that one of them's completely missing and the other one's half gone, time well spent.